Today we are going to start a chapter, the name of the chapter is Friction. So, as discussed in the previous chapter, we had some portion related to friction. Now today, we will be studying more about friction. So, what is friction? Friction is an opposing force towards the direction of the moment. So, if you are moving on one side, the friction will always be acting on the opposite side of the moment. That is friction. Now we are going to see some of the what are what is the main cause for the friction. Now whenever we observe any surface, we find some irregularities on it. No matter how smooth the surface is, but in microscopic level we find some irregularities on it. Uh, whenever this irregular irregularities they interlock with each other, that gives rise to friction. For example, out here in this diagram, figure twelve point one. So as you can see, there is a uh, there is some kind of drum out there, and below there, below it, there is a uh, cardboard. So they, when this cardboard is observed at microscopic level, you will find some irregular irregular surface on it, and even this drum will be having irregular surface on it. So when a, whenever they these two are kept together, those irregular surface they interlock with each other, which give rise to friction. Now we're going to see some of the factors affecting the friction. First of it, friction always acts opposite to the direction of the motion. So if we are moving on the one side, friction will always be acting on the opposite side. Depends upon the nature of the uh, surface in contact. So it will it will depend on what kind of surface we are using or what kind of surface it's out there. It will be depending upon the nature of the surface. And one of the important thing depend upon the mass of an object so if the subject if any subject or any substance is very it has high mass or its mass is very uh, huge then friction will be more so that way we have some of the factors affecting the friction now there are two type two kind of friction will be see one is static and another one is sliding friction so according to this activity i'll explain you both the phenomena so in this experiment they have taken a cardboard and one brick is obtained and to that brick a thread is tied and to that thread a spring balance is attached or spring balance uh, we used to see in mr shop and i think nowadays we don't observe this kind of uh, spring balance but long time back we we, we could we uh, these things were dead in the mr shops and all so with the help of this they uh, could balance the any articles or any substance if they want to sell. Now, what is done? A uh, brick is tied, and that one end of the brick is attached to the spring balance. Now, the spring balanced uh, is uh, the spring balance is slowly pulled. That's the experiment done. So. The friction is existing between the brick and the uh, cardboard. So the friction with with brick and cardboard, when both of them are red, when the brick as well as cardboard when they are in rest, this kind of friction is known as static friction. It's, the brick will not be moving. That means the irregular surface will interlock. This kind of friction is known as static friction. Now slowly. We try pulling the spring balance, and during that time, slowly and slowly, uh, after some times, the brick will move. Now, uh, the maximum point where the brick is unable to move, that exact point, or that last point where the brick is able to, uh, the brick is not able to move because of the friction between brick and the board. That friction is known as limiting friction. So it it can also be considered as the highest limit of the friction. Beyond that, the brick will slowly move. And once the brick starts moving, now the static force will be static friction. I mean, static friction will be now converted to sliding friction. Why? Because the brick is sliding over the 
block uh, block of cardboard so static friction is now converted to sliding friction so that's how static and sliding friction is uh, understood next one is rolling friction <coughs> so the same experiment that uh, the one with brick and uh, the spring one if we perform the ex same experiment but now if we take some pencils like the pencils if we keep below the brick if we if we try to do that then uh, the friction then the then um the amount of energy or amount of force we apply to pull the brick will not be very much more why because the pencil it will start rolling very fast because we we do like in previous case we don't need to apply that much of force because of the pencil will start rolling and the bricks will move so this gives rise to rolling friction the friction that resists the motion when an object rolls over another object or surface is called rolling friction so uh, that is that is rolling friction so because of this rolling friction we find that any object like suitcase and all it's very heavy to carry so that's why uh, some wheels are made at the end so because of this thing because of this concept it's easier to move any object which has wheels the concept is because of the rolling friction now now we are going to see some of the advantages of friction so first advantage of friction friction between the ground and our feet helps us to grip so because of the friction whenever we are walking onto the ground there is a grip between our leg and the foot if friction was not there then we could not have uh, stopped while walking next one friction between pen and paper so it's because of the friction we are, we are able to write in pen uh, we are able to write with pen and pen in paper or with, with the help of chalk in blackboard then a nail can be hammered into a block of wood due to friction between nail and wood so if friction was not there then we could have never uh, the nail could have never penetrated the wood it's because of the friction because of the 